Hi everyone, this is Ricky with Bromero Cards. This week we're going to play around with some Lawn Fawn stamps. This stamp set's called Mantirific. We're also going to play with some Distressed Oxide inks and along with some Copic markers. The first thing we're going to do here is I'm going to create a water effect on a shiny cardstock. We're going to, this is the stamp set we're going to be using. And I have some glossy cardstock here. I'm going to take the first blue of Distressed Oxide here spray it down with water and just tap that down on the glossy cardstock. I'm going to spray it down with some water and then I'm going to heat this up. Um, as I do this, I actually do this through four colors. I'm going to speed up the process here so you can see how it's done. But after each color, I actually dry it completely and then add the next color. And you're going to see some coloring here like really fast. Um, I'm basically putting on different kinds of blues and I did this twisted citron I believe is the yellow. And I'm just adding that in several layers. The beauty about this product is, is that you can add as many layers as you want and it won't turn brown just as long as you're drying between each layer. So here I am, I'm adding the final blues here. And I'm drying it and then I decide that I wanted a little bit more of a water effect on that. So what I do is I actually spray it um, one more time and then dry it so it looks like there's some water or like it's a water effect on this. Um, I'll dry that completely and then we're going to go to the next step. So what I want you to see here is actually the cardstock before I do anything else to it. As you can see, it's very chalky and it's really dull. But we're getting ready to add this Distress Glaze onto this card. Um, the video after this, I'm going to show you actually how to make your own Distress Glaze so you do not have to pay $9 for that product. Um, but we're going to use a little bit of it. Um, as you can see, I zoom in. It's just a small amount. And what you're going to do is just buff it onto the cardstock. I'm going to hold it up, hold it for, up for you to see that one side is shiny and one side is dull. Basically, what this is doing is taking off the uh, coating that makes it look dry, and it's actually waterproofing it as well. As you're doing this, you go ahead and put it along the cardstock, and then you take a dry towel and you just buff that out. And as you see, as I hold it up closer to the camera you'll see that it's shiny and it kind of looks like marble. I also just wanted to share a few other examples that I made using this effect with different oxide inks. This is like a space background. Um, another blue one and a brown one here that I'm actually going to use later on in this card but I thought I would share those with you. And this is the stamp set we're going to use. I'm not going to show you show you me stamping all of this out but I'm basically going to stamp out four manatees and then three sets of all the accessories that come along with this. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp those out and then we'll be right back, right back with the coloring. Okay, so now we're back. We're going to start doing the coloring of the manatees and all the accessories here. I'm using various Copic markers. Um, I'm, not a, I'm not an artist. I do not know how to professionally shade uh, professionally color things. I just do things as I think they're right and it's all about fun and not being serious so that's what I do. Um, basically I took the C0, did the first coat, and now I'm going to do C2. I'm going to put that going towards the front of the manatee. And I basically kind of do some shading. I'm, again, I'm not an expert so this is just by hand and what I think is right. I'm going to take the C4 and do a smaller batch of coloring towards the center of the manatee and uh, just spreading that out. I kind of felt like it was too light um, of like where the belly is of the manatee, so I decided to actually go ahead and color that out a little bit. My C0, my C0 marker was actually drying out and I didn't realize it until I started coloring the second manatee and you'll see me start to actually have to refill that. Um, so I'm just going to keep coloring this in. As you can see I keep going further out and out with the darker markers and then I'll take the middle shade and go ahead and smooth that out and then I'll take the C0 and smooth that out again. 
Now I'm going to start the second manatee and then this is when I realize that my C1 is way too dry. There's no ink in it. So what I have to do is actually stop and refill this and I actually don't use it again, I don't believe, for the rest of the uh, video. So here I am, you're just going to see me fill this up. I'm not going to show you the whole thing, but basically you have to put all these little drops into the chamber and then let it rest so the nib could actually soak in the ink. Um, so I continue to do that, but we're going to go ahead and go past this. Now we're going to go ahead and paint, or I'm sorry, color in the second set of manatees. I'm going to use N1, N3, and N5 to color these in. Oh, I'm sorry, I was aware that this was not focusing in on the cardstock. This may be a little blurry going through here. I'm using the N3, and I'm also uh, doing the same thing that I did on the other manatee. Starting dark on the edges and going towards the center. And then you're going to see me come in here with N5 and do the exact same thing. Um, now that I'm seeing this, I realize that I need to pay attention a little more to make sure that the camera is focusing on the paper and not my hand. I'll have to make sure I do that next time. I have a new setup here, you guys, so I'm trying to get used to it. Um, I have kind of new lighting. I don't, as you can see in the glass mat, that's actually new. Um, I was going to put it as a haul video, but I guess you guys will see this now. But um, you'll see the big bright light there above. That's part of the lighting for my recording of this now. So I'm not for sure how to get rid of that glare. I don't think I can. Um, but anyway, on to the video. I'm almost finished coloring the manatees. And we're going to go ahead and skip to the accessories. So here I'm going to do some really quick coloring. I'm just using some, using some simple colors. I'm going to use two greens for the seaweed, two reds for the little flowers or stars or whatever you want to call them in the um, set here, and then also some peaches and some yellows for the seashells. Um, it's super simple, just two colors, and I probably didn't even need to do two colors but I wanted to do a little blending. So I'll gonna speed through that so that you can watch that. So now I'm gonna bring in the brown cardstock that I made earlier in the day. And I'm actually gonna use this as the bottom of my card or use it as sand. I'm pulling in some Lawn Fawn uh, stitched hill dies here uh, so that I can go ahead and get those cut out. Um, basically, I'm just gonna cut these out to make layers into the card and it'll just be kind of like I guess hills in the water that we're making and so those are the cart those are the pieces there that we'll be using to set up the card and as you see here I'm trying to put the sand onto the card just testing it out to make sure it looks okay um, I thought it would be a good transition they kind of match each other so I thought that would be great to use a sand and then to cut these out, I do not have the matching dies for this set. I try not to buy dies if I don't have to, because that just means more stamps you could purchase. I'm going to use my scan and cut to actually cut these out, and I'll be right back. So we have them cut out, and you're going to see me remove the items here. Unfortunately, one of the manatees did not make it. Sometimes the scan and cut isn't as accurate as regular dies, so that's always an issue as well. As I'm putting the card together, I realized that it's kind of plain, so I wanted to bring in an MFT die set that I have called Wonky Rectangles. And so I'm going to go ahead and get this cut out of the frame, but I also have to cut out the same pieces for the sand so it matches. So what, what I thought I was going to do is put both of the pieces here and I was just going to cut everything at once. But then I realized I think the paper was going to be too thick, so I really couldn't do that. So the first thing I do is go ahead and run this through the die cutting machine and get the border on that first piece of paper. And then what I'm going to do is tape the sand pieces to the die and go ahead and cut those out so that I have the matching border at the bottom of the card. So I'm going to do this really quick and then we'll move on over to the next step. I'm going to play around with this card a little bit to find out like exactly where I want everything to go. I'm just kind of laying it out. I'm not putting anything permanent down just so that I can see where exactly I want everything to be. I'm going to start adding the accessories, uh, lining up the, the little hillsides or the sand 
to make sure that everything's going to look okay. And then I start placing items onto the card where I want them to be. I did not, when you do this, you should take a picture of how you have this so you can remember to do it the exact same way when you go to start building the card. Unfortunately, I did not do that. So now we're going to start working on the sentiment for this card. So now we're going to cut out a text bubble, as you would call it, a cartoon bubble for the sentiment on this card. I'm using a lawn fawn um, die here, and I'm going to use some vellum paper. And what we're going to do is do some heat embossing on this with some embossing powder. But this is what the little conversation text bubble looks like, and we'll go to the next step. When I'm doing these sentiments, I always get a little stressed out because I'm not for sure if the uh, stamp is actually going to be straight when I put this on the block, on the acrylic block. The good thing about this glass mat is it has all these measurement lines, so you can actually look to see if it's straight as you're lining them up. These stamps are kind of small, and well, with my man hands, it's kind of hard to keep them together. But here it looks like they're straight, but one thing that I always do is I print this, or I actually stamp this off onto a different piece of paper just to make sure everything's lined up and the spacing is correct on this. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stamp this in black ink and use it on a piece of paper to make sure everything looks okay. This looks okay, and I actually use the back of my card to do this. No one else is ever gonna see it. There's no point in wasting paper, so that's what I used. Now what I'm going to do is actually use the embossing, or the Versamark, and we're going to start doing the embossing. Oh, there's my head. Um, I'm going to use Princess Gold Embossing Powder by Ranger, I believe that's what it's from. I'm going to go ahead and place this on to the Versamark ink here and heat that up really quick. Uh, with vellum, you have to be careful when you're doing heat embossing because you could actually uh, melt the vellum. So a good way to not do that is just have your heat gun and go back and forth without um, being too close to the vellum paper. Uh, that will keep it from warping and also from actually melting. And I've had that happen before and it's not fun. And now it's time to start putting the card together. The first thing I'm going to do is put down the water cardstock. I'm going to use some uh, just liquid adhesive here, and I'm going to place that down onto the uh, the card base. And I'm going to use an acrylic block to actually weigh that down to keep it from buckling and for it to dry while I'm working on the other items. The next thing I'm going to do is then go ahead and put on the sand. Um, as you can see, I'm lining this up with the card to make sure everything fits. I'm also trying to line it up with the stitched marks on the side so that they kind of line up as close as possible onto the card. And it actually takes me a while to do this. For the bottom piece of sand, what I'm going to do is use some 3M foam tape and place that on there to add some dimension. The next thing I want to do is I decided to make one of the manatees a girl or a female uh, manatee. So what I decided to do is take one of the flowers and one of the uh, small seashells and add it to her head. So what I'm doing is just using some liquid adhesive and I'm just going to place those onto her head to make her look more feminine than the other manatee. Now what I'm going to do is set up the card with where I want all the seaweed and the seashells. I'll use some liquid adhesive to go ahead and put those down as well. Next I'm going to add some 3M foam tape to the back of the manatees and go ahead and place those onto the card. And What I'm doing here is just adjusting this to make sure that the sentiment uh, fits. Now I'm going to go ahead and add the uh, sentiment to the card. The thing about vellum is it's see-through, so you can't really use 3M foam tape to put behind here. They do make a clear uh, foam tape that you can use, but it still would have shown through here. So what I decided to do was just use the dot adhesive here, and it really doesn't show too much in the card. And I just placed it right on top. You can see the water through the, the vellum, and that's great. Now what I'm going to do is just to add a little extra touch to the card. On the inside, I'm going to use some Lawn Fawn. I think it's green or fresh cut grass. That's what it is. I'm just going to take this little seashell and I'm just going to 
stamp for those inside the card here. Just adds a little touch. It's nothing super fancy, but it just adds a little interest to the inside of the card. And as you can see, I actually got a green line in my card. It's okay. It's handmade. It's not supposed to be perfect, right? So we're coming to the end of the video. I want to thank everyone for watching the video, subscribing, and sharing these. I really appreciate it. Here you're going to see a sample of the card. I'm actually I'm going to hold it up for you. There you go. So that's the finished card and also a few still shots. There are some links at the end of this uh, video that I would greatly appreciate if you looked at other videos and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Have a great day.